and land to the beautiful country of New Zealand at Auckland Airport. So get ready for the exciting tour. New Zealand. So the flag of the New Zealand is the symbol of the real government and the people of the New Zealand. The royal blue background of the flag is derived from the ensign of a royal blue navy of the New Zealand. The stars at the Southern Cross assembles the country's location at the South Pacific Ocean. New Zealand is situated at the southern eastern part of the Australia and the South Pacific Ocean. Talking about the states, it's Auckland, Rotorua, Wellington, that is the state, Wilblehem, then Kaikoura, then Christchurch, then Mount Cook, then Dunedin, and Tenon, it's Milford Sound, Queenstown, Francis Glacier, Winakake, Greymouth, Others Pass, and Christchurch. So, let us discover the history of this country. Like, you might be confused, like how this country in the South Pacific Ocean is discovered. The history of the New Zealand dates back approximately 700 years to when it was discovered and settled by Polynesians who developed a distinct Mori culture. Like other Pacific culture, Mori society was centered on kingship lakes and connection with the land, but unlike them, it was adapted to a cool temperature environment rather than a warm tropical one. The first European explorer known to the site New Zealand was Dutch navigator Abel Tasman on 13 December 1642. In 1643, he chartered the west coast of the North Island. His expedition then sailed back to Bavia, about seven foot on New Zealand soil. In 1840, the Treaty of Waitangi was signed between representatives of the United Kingdom and various Maori chiefs, bringing New Zealand into British Empire and giving Maori the same right as British subjects. The colony gained responsible government in 1850s from the 1890s, the New Zealand Parliament. So let us just have a quick overview and get, let us know about the country. So the capital of the New Zealand is Wellington. The largest city is Auckland. Languages spoken are English, Maori, and Sign. The government is parliamentary constitutional monarchy. The monarch is Elizabeth II. The governor general is Patsy Reddy. Prime Minister is Jacinda Ardern. Population of this country is 4.93 million. The area covered is 47,550 kilometers square. The game played in this country is rugby. Talking about the weather or climate conditions, so the country has a similar climate as of that India, that it has all the four seasons, that is winter, spring, summer, and autumn. So are you excited to explore the country? Let's just get started. So The food felt enjoy and the legends come to life. Across two volcanoes, deep lakes, 
living wildlife and that's your one thing for sure. If it's nature please never be a dumb man. Study yourself and all it asks ultimate travel guide reveals everything you need to know about truly most I never nice. So travelers, are you ready? Welcome to music. Let's start with nature. This beautiful island nation is home just a four and a half million people, many of whom go by the self appointed nickname Kiwi. This slang is derived from the country's national symbol, a flightless bird called, you guessed it, the Kiwi. The country itself is formed by two mainland masses, more than the sunlight, as well as about 600 other smaller islands. You see, as a whole, is quite modest in size, similar in land mass to Japan. Well, it's a city New Zealand, and also the southernmost capital city in the world, while Auckland, the original capital city, is the largest Polynesian city, goes by the name of the City of Sales, which makes sense when you consider that Auckland has more personal capital than any other place in the world. What else does New Zealand have more of than the entire planet? She. Hopefully you're a fan of these furry farm animals because there are about seven to every resident, which works out to nearly 13 million sheep. Your mum won't have to worry that you threw out the adventure either, because dinner has remained firmly in the top 10 safest countries to call home for several years running. They're also comfortably progressive, having been the first major nation to allow all citizens the right to vote, regardless of gender. There are three official languages in New Zealand, English, Maori, and New Zealand Sign Language, but you'll be able to get by just fine with English. Now, when you are looking to uncover the Maori way of life, hit the slopes, or some delicious wine, there's plenty of diverse adventures to enjoy. So let's take a closer look. New Zealand is renowned for its world-class green trails. Breathtaking views await you in Fjordland National Park, which includes four major tracks Milford, Kemper, Root, and Hollyford. While Milford is perhaps the most famous, hikers at each track can access to visuals of forested valleys, birds, turquoise waters, expansive lakes, and trees, spectacular mountain scenery. For Lord of the Wings, a visit to Tongariro National Park, where you can hold the jagged volcanic rock and eerily barren landscape, should be considered a must. Hopefully, Moody Weather cooperates during your visit, and you'll be to the view of Mount Naraho, otherwise known as Mount Doom. Hiking the entire Alpine crossing takes about seven hours and includes lava fields. Tussock meadows and the neon turquoise geothermally heated waters of the MD lakes. If beaches are more your thing, New Zealand has a hike for that too. Along the Abel Tasman Coast track, travelers can enjoy more than 40 kilometers of golden sand beaches, some tropical bushline and granite cliffs, accented by clear azure waters and frolicking fur seals. Keep in mind that several tidal inlets mean that you'll be required to time your crossings with low tide, so plan accordingly. Along the Spetsing Coast, you can see the mysterious Maora peoples, which are stones formed from ancient sea sands. An equally mesmerizing and seemingly perplexing sight would be the famous Waitomo Caves. Thrill seekers have absolutely now into this lost world. It takes about 20 minutes and provides impressive views of spagatites and gigantic flowstone formations on the way down. Once you've lost yourself in the isolation and majesty of nature, grab a few of your fellow travel companions and go jet boating through Queenstown's Shotto River. Or tackle the currents of Tatea Falls along the Kaituna River in Rotorua, the highest commercially rafted waterfall in the world. Always standing, bungee jumping, and skydiving, each offer unique and exhilarating views 
Hills, places like Woodrua, Portland Harbor, and Queenstown, respectively. Though you can enjoy any one of these thrill-seeking experiences pretty much anywhere throughout the country. If you want to do things a tad slower, hit the point of using its countless golf courses. Enjoy the stunning greens that can be found in Auckland, Queenstown, and Wellington. For the snow bunnies, strap on your skis and fly to the top of Queenstown's mountains to enjoy a refreshingly exciting ski down world-renowned peaks and valleys. Within 20 minutes from downtown Queenstown, you'll be at the foot of Coronet Peak, and within 35, the Remarkables, a range that lives up to its name and is a must for any snowboarder or skier out there. Once the weather warms up, you can catch the surf on the curving Bay of Plenty or along the untouched beaches of Gisborne. And if you really want to show off your surfing skills, then head to Wanga Mata, situated on the southeast coast of the Coromandel Peninsula in the North Island. But maybe you're just looking to kick back and enjoy that weather break. That's certainly all right, and you pick the right destination to escape to. You can catch a Kapahaka performance of the Maori people, indigenous New Zealanders, and enjoy chants of choral singing to graceful songs and ferocious war dances. Consider visiting Maori meeting strands called Marae and take part in a Pathiri, a traditional welcoming ceremony. Or, if you wish to get literary, take a tour of Hobbiton in Hamilton, Waikato, and see J.R. Tolkien's epic story, What to Life, with a wander through the heart of the Shire. You can stop by the Green Dragon Inn, or visit Bang End. What time of year does one go to Middle Earth? Fall? Winter? Well, just to be clear, there's never a bad time to travel to a place like New Zealand. Though travellers should be ready for weather that can change unexpectedly, regardless of the time of year. However, most places throughout the country receive over 2,000 hours of sunshine a year, and because of the low levels of air pollution, the sunlight is especially radiant. While the far north has subtropical weather during summer, and inland alpine areas of the south island, can be as cold as minus 10 degrees Celsius or 40 degrees Fahrenheit in winter, most of the country lies close to the coast, which means mild temperatures all year round. New Zealand summer runs from December to February and should be considered the peak travel season. It's also considered the perfect time for enjoying activities like hiking, scenic climbing, winery tours, and surfing. If you're lucky, you can catch a wave alongside dolphins off the country's long coastline. Autumn settles in from March to May, and the views of the fall foliage are truly something to behold. Winter lasts from June to August, and this is when you can expect the ski season to begin to flourish. Spring temperatures are enjoyed from September through November, and offer a beautiful combination of spring blossoms and snow-capped mountains. Once you've satisfied your desire to explore, it's time to sit down and enjoy some delicious local cuisine. And just what is waiting for you at the dining table? Let's find out. New Zealand's cuisine draws on Polynesia, Asian, and European inspiration, and the results are staggeringly delicious. A typical kiwi breakfast consists of cereal, toast, and either a cup of coffee, tea, juice, or milk. On weekends, when more time is available to prepare a cooked breakfast, locals sit down to plates of scrambled eggs, bacon, cooked tomatoes, mushrooms, hash browns, and baked beans. After a long morning outdoors, you'll need to enjoy a quick hot pie to re-energize. These tasty small pastries come in a variety of flavors and are typically filled with mince and cheese, bacon, egg, and even sink. Once the evening rolls around, enjoy servings of roast lamb, mutton, and of course, battered fish and chips. Due to New Zealand's hot coastline, the selection of seafood is quite diverse. Succulent oysters, mussels, shellfish, keen salmon, snapper, scallops, and white bait, a true kiwi delicacy. 
If you're looking for a refreshing dessert to top up your day of indulging your taste buds, then help yourself to Anna a meringue-based dessert named after the Russian ballerina Anna Pavlova. But what should you wash down all these tasty foods with? Of course, you can enjoy your share of refreshing beers and ciders, but New Zealand is mainly renowned for its many exquisite wines. Sommeliers praise the country's take on Sauvignon Blanc as being the best in the world. Other wines highly regarded include Cabernet Merlot blends and Pinot Noir, to name a few. Spectacular. Once you've allowed your thirst to be both quenched and delighted by these unique libations, it'll be time to begin mapping out your next adventure through this oceanic paradise. We hope these tips ensure that your next great key adventure will be a truly inspiring one. If you still can't get enough, then check out these to come for more inspiration and travel tips. Okay, so that was a great tour to the country of the New Zealand, and we have explored all, all over of it. So, going to see now, I would like to come on my favorite topic that is the New Zealand airline industry. So, New Zealand runs Air New Zealand industry. Air New Zealand Limited is the flag carrier airline of New Zealand based in Auckland. The airline operates scheduled passenger flights to 20 domestic and 32 international destinations in 20 countries, primarily around and within the Pacific Rim. Air New Zealand currently operates a fleet of Airbus A320, Airbus A320 Neo family, Boeing 777, Boeing 787 jet aircraft, as well as the regional fleet of ATR-72 and Bombardier Q300 turboprop aircraft. Air New Zealand was awarded Airline of the Year in 2010 and 2012 by the Air Transport World Global Airline Awards in 2014. Air New Zealand was ranked the safest airline in the world by JAC BEC. Okay, so this is the fleet of the Air New Zealand and the aircraft which I mentioned earlier is here. The first one is Boeing 777-200. Next is Boeing 777-200. Coming to the next is Boeing 779, then Airbus AT20 that is used for the New Zealand domestic flights. For the international flights, air, the airlines operates Airbus 320. Then comes ATR-72 and last, Bombardier Q300. Okay, so talking about the worldwide ranking of the Air New Zealand, the world's best airlines for 2020 have been named by the airlinesrating.com, the world's only safety and product rating website, and the airline of the year is New Zealand. Okay. Talking about the top three safest airlines for the 2021, Air New Zealand holds the third position, whereas the first and second positions are held by Qantas and Qatar Airways. Okay, so this is the brief description of my profile. I am business development manager at Air Cruise Aviation Private Limited. You can visit me through this link if you wish. So that was all about today's tour to New Zealand. Next time, I will be taking to another exciting country. So hold for it and thanks for watching it.